call this meeting to order for December 13th at 5.30 p.m. If you'll all join me with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, if we can get an adoption of the agenda, please. Yes, I'll make a motion to adopt the agenda for December 13, 2022, as submitted. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Okay, item two informational. We've got our recognitions and proclamations. Anybody on the board have any? Anything to share? Yes, Sandy. I just wanted to give a real big shout out to Camille Ball and Vicki Sweeney and the fantastic job that the Vulture Peak and Wickenburg High School choirs and band did in their uh, show the other night. It was really wonderful. Awesome. It really was. And the heart that Vicki Sweeney has for those kids and the love for those kids, people were walking out of there with tears in their eyes. Yeah, so it was a fantastic show. Well attended? Very well attended. In fact, it was better, uh, there was better attendance than there was at the play. Oh, wow. I was very excited to see the number of people that were there. Good. Anything else, Sandy? I'll let somebody else say something. Okay. And if they don't, I'll, you can come back to me. I will, I promise. Okay. Susan? Um, I just wanted to say thank you to the high school kids who did Santa and all of that fun stuff. This was our 10th year in a row going as a family. Or maybe we might have missed one in there. No, I think we have all 10. Um, so it was a lot of fun and the kids enjoyed it. And my almost teenager pretended like she wasn't having fun for a little while, but then she jumped in so um yeah it was a lot of fun had a awesome. great time good anything else no that's it randy i didn't have anything thank you Ron? i just uh just want to say you know best of luck to all the, the winter sports that are kicking off here uh their season beginning so or in i guess it's already in progress but right. hasn't been sure. since we've been together so <laughs> Good. Thank you, Ron. Sandy, did yours get taken? Go ahead. Well, Dr. Remedini hasn't had her say yet. Oh, she's she's got her. Do you want to go before? Do you want to go before the board member? No, yes. I think I think Miss Gill should she say hers, and if I repeat it, I, I, no, I would like you to go. <clears throat> <first. laughs> I have a really long list. Okay. First of all, I'd like to congratulate our re-elected governing board members, Sandy Gill and Ron Alexander. It's a pleasure working with you, and I thank you so much for what you do for our students and our staff in the school district. So congratulations, and thank you for rejoining us on this governing board. Um, congratulations to the Wickenburg High School football team for receiving the 3A Sportsmanship Award. That's a big deal. Coach McNeil and his team and the coaching staff were recognized at the state football tournament last Saturday at ASU, which I think is amazing that our kids get to go to that and to see a college campus and a, and a big deal game. So congratulations to Coach McNeil. Um, I, too, want to recognize the outstanding concert that was put on last Wednesday by the Vulture Peak and the high school choirs and band. And I do want to thank our um, leadership, our district leadership through all three of our principals from Wickenburg were there. So it was well attended. It was a great, it was a great community event. Um, I want to recognize Ms. Corby Naylor asked to provide the keynote address for this year's Arizona School Administrators Women in Leadership Conference. So it's a state oh. conference. So wow. congratulations. congratulations. Um, and yes, you can attend. Okay. Um, I want to thank the entire community of Wickenburg for so generously responding to our regular wishes. This program, headed up by our school counselors and supported by all our staff members, provides Christmas gifts for families in need. And Casey gave me a heads up today to go over to 
um, Hasiampa as they were delivering him. And I was crying when I went into Carissa's office because that just warms my heart to see such generosity in our community to make sure that all of our kids have a outstanding Christmas. And it was just so much fun. I, I would have stayed there longer, but I was running out of tears and, you know, so it was beautiful. <laughs> and then I too want to, I want to wish our staff, students and community a wonderful winter break. I know we all need some rest and relaxation. So I hope that everybody gets that over the winter break. Okay, did I say what you Thank you. <laughs> you did. I was going to recognize the football team. Okay. Because they thought that that was such a wonderful award to get. We may not have gone to playoffs or anything, but to get that award, I thought was really great recognition. Great uh -huh. recognition of our kids. Right. So, Good. Yeah. That's right. what I was going to say. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. And we will move into our principal reports. And. We've got Festival of Foothills and Miss Corby Naylor. And do you have your microphone? Oh, you need to. They're going to. Uh, they're going to quiz you on your board. Yeah. I think we'll do ladies first this time. Susan, do you want to start? Or do you have no, anything? No, I don't want to start. Okay, Sandy. Well, I don't really want to start, but <laughs> <laughs> thanks for coming. <laughs> um, I guess my thing is, is I would just like um, to say something and then ask something. Um, I'm I'm happy to see that we're jumping on board and catching these kids before they're more behind than we've already been dealing with, and I think that's wonderful but I don't understand this language. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm happy to kind of explain it. Um, I wanted to give great. more data that deals with the day-to-day -day ways that we change instruction so that we don't wait until the end of the year to see that our kids didn't make the growth. Um, so I did include a lot of information and um, I recognize some of the things are probably a little jargony. So um, for example, on the PLC agenda, we're talking about professional learning communities. So I wanted to kind of share what our process looks like um, we meet every week, and that's the coach, the teacher team, myself, as well as our ESS teachers. And um, we ask, what is this? What is it we want our students to learn? You can see on there. And then it has the fourth grade reading target, and this is just a fourth and fifth grade example. Mm -hmm. The fourth grade reading target would be to identify multiple points of view in a text. The fourth grade math would be that solving long division equations, and you can kind of see what that's laid out as. Question number two is how we talk about how do we know if kids are going to learn it? So how are we going to assess and show evidence of student learning? Not just that we taught it, but that they learned it. Yeah. And that gives the example of what we're using to measure that each week. So in, for example, the district formative assessment was used for that fourth grade reading for a point of view. The long division worksheet was used to measure their mastery of that fourth grade math standard. And then the fraction sex ticket and so forth. And then when you look at number three, it asks, how do we respond when students did not learn it? And we actually put the students' names that did not learn it because we know that it comes down to growing each individual student if we want all of our kids to grow. So you, those are actually those letters, L, F, S, M, T. Those are kids' names. But I took their names out because I, I wanted to be confidential. So, okay. so when it says reteach point of view, all those students named there are students that need a reteach of that concept because they haven't mastered it yet and it tells you what we're gonna do with them. So they're gonna get a small group reteach by their teacher and then a retest of that point of view. For math, they're gonna do module three, lesson 28, those five students right there, and they're gonna be working with Mr. Rader on that extra practice. Uh, you can see the math reteach, exactly what's gonna happen. We're pulling whoever G, L, S, and D are, and again, it would be their actual names, and they're gonna work in a small group uh, with Mr. Gardy, and then fifth grade reading reteach is gonna be doing informational text main idea in their small group reteach. And then when you scroll down to number four, we know there's lots of kids that did master it the first time. So what are we gonna do with those students? And we have that conversation in that PLC group and say, okay, we're gonna take our text. The long division students are gonna move into area models and other ways to solve long division and so forth. So that's what our process is and I wanted to share it with you and I do understand it kind of does need an explanation, but I think yeah. it's a really powerful thing that we do so I want you guys to be aware of this. While we're on that. Reading this, you would think these letters stand for some secret sure. teacher language. And it's like, okay, what do these mean? Sure. Yeah. So I kind of threw me. Yeah, and, and I apologize. I tried to put that um, 
the names were abbreviated, but I, I understand in reading it, it kind of does need an explanation to go with it. But I did think it was a really powerful piece of what we do. So I wanted to share it with you, and it's just kind of hard to, to send it um, via text instead of explanation, so. Are you, are you on that part? What's IXL? Oh, okay, there you go again. Um, IXL is a, is a computer-based program we use for differentiation, um, and we have it district-wide, but it's, um, it's basically, we can use it for math and reading, and it focuses in on um, a student's level, and they kind of work at their own differentiated level based on um, what they've mastered already. Okay. So it's a great tool to use when we're reteaching another group because the kids that have mastered it can be extended in the meantime. What other questions are on there? I know there's more. I just want to, well, I don't want to talk for too long <laughs> if you have specific questions. Um, okay. Well, let me throw some good things in there okay. in uh -huh. between. I thought your fundraiser was absolutely great to raise that much money. I thought that was wonderful. And something in Carissa knows this is very near and dear to my heart is the participation you had from your parents. Mm -hmm. To have eight out of the 13 classes, I think it was, mm -hmm. have 100% participation at the, I, and an overall 96%. I just, that just warmed my heart to know that there's actually still some parents out there who care. And that credit also goes to the staff because the teachers went above and beyond to, to hold late conferences or virtual conferences or phone conferences or whatever they had to do to make sure they reached all their parents. So they, they put in a lot of work because that expectation of 100% was kind of a, a goal we set for ourselves. So, Well, that made me happy. <laughs> <laughs> Very happy. Um, and I thought it was great that one of the festival foothill children got to <laughs> lead the orchestra. That was fun. That was cool. And um, just overall, I'm glad to see we're capturing the children who are not learning right away and moving them on. And I'll leave something for somebody else to say. Sure. Okay, I'll go. All right. Um, I really like the format. And I like the way that you listed it all out. I didn't know what those letters meant, so thank you for explaining those, those were names. Um, but I really like that format because it shows you, you know, really the steps you're going to take to help all of the students achieve that academic goal. So that's really great. And I really liked your pie charts as well. I thought that was awesome. Um, and then the obviously the pictures and the parent involvement and all of that are just just great. So thank you so much for all you do. Randy? Hi, uh, Corby. Um, thanks for the introduction for the uh, uh, Greek 101. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I do understand it. And uh, after that explanation, I love seeing a lot more of all those letters under uh, section four there yeah, that's right. of the proficiency. That's our goal, always. That was great. Uh, the other ones, yeah. Uh, a number of letters and stuff, but man, that one was loaded with the proficiency. Great job. And uh, um, echo what uh, Sandy said, uh, the fundraiser, the fun run, that's a phenomenal amount of money raised. Uh, Parent-teacher conference attendance, wow, that, that just blew me away. Um, that was, that's great. And, um, oh, I like the uh, info in here on the veterans uh, celebration thing. And a lot, and get to see our our uh, it was fun. board member there, Ron. <laughs> it was good. Penny. It was very good. <laughs> she she did a great job with that. Yeah. So uh, that was that's great. That was good report. Oh yeah. You. you done? <laughs> yes. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to say I really like the the report and the information it provides in a in a format that makes sense. To me, at least, <laughs> you know, I mean, I could, I could see, you know, where this is going. Uh, but I do have a couple questions uh, on the right below where the the colored yes. tables there. Uh, okay, acronyms again. Uh, there's PSF, NWF, CLS, um, W. WR or something. Yeah. yeah. Next slide. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. um, so I, I talked to Dr. Mazzini about this and I did know questions were coming. So I tried to kind of um, explain it in a little paragraph that I added afterwards um, about what those things mean. But basically, 
These are just samples from a first grade and a third grade class. And what we do is every two weeks, we're monitoring those students that have not achieved benchmark yet. So we know that on the trajectory, that by the end of the year, they're not going to be at benchmark. And so those students, we progress monitor every two weeks. We check in on where they are with their nonsense word fluency, which is reading three sounds together, like um, consonant, vowel, consonant words that are not real. Um, and and those, that's to be able to tell if they're using a decoding skill versus just sight word memorization, right? So that's nonsense word fluency. Um, correct letter sounds is CLS, that should, the first graders have their correct letter sounds. And if you look at these, you can tell um, on the end of that first grade section, if a student is green in both NWF and CLS, meaning they've already hit benchmark for their nonsense word fluency and their correct letter sounds, you won't see another testing of that same skill in November because they won't be monitored again until December. That helps us focus in on those students that we need to get to benchmark. But we obviously want to make sure we're not losing any along the way, which is why we still continue to monitor them throughout. You can see these, these beautiful numbers here where we have some kids that were maybe orange or yellow. And down at the bottom right, there's the key that shows well below benchmark. So that shows the number of correct letter sounds they have to have to be at benchmark. And the number of WWR, which is whole words read, they have to be at benchmark. So you can see if they're orange or yellow, they're, they're below that trajectory, which means if we don't intervene and double dose them or give them more time on task or more practice with those skills, they're not going to be where they need to be at the end of the year. So we know those are our kids we have to pull for a small group and really give them that extra intervention to get them back on that correct trajectory to be at benchmark by the end of the year. So we're really digging into this data in a targeted, targeted way down to the individual student, down to the individual letter, down to the individual skill. And so you'll see when some of these kids were green and orange, but then as they moved forward into the next um, progress monitoring, you start seeing a pop up into that green and blue. Mm -hmm. That's our evidence that what we're doing is working. Okay, that's good. And the third grade one that has different letters, um, that's OR, ORF, ORF is oral reading fluency, and retell is basically a, a, a student's ability to retell and understand what they read. Okay. So those are different things that we're measuring because obviously third grade skills are different than first. So do you, you you have first and third here, but does it that same thing go for every grade level and whatever they're yeah, working on? Yeah, it looks on? different. So these are more skills based. This is off of a cadence information, or okay. data, and that really measures skills. Whereas the stuff you usually see with Galileo and those things, we're measuring standards, which is why we'll see Galileo data mostly for like the third or eighth grade and. Our, our cadence data is usually the younger grades because it's really more skills based. But we do have ORF and retail for like fourth and fifth grade as well. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. No, that, that, that that's that's really good to, to see the the work for on individual, you know, down to the individual student level and be able to to uh, talk about that. Um. Do they have anything else here? I mean, again, I had also the parent teacher. Uh, conference participation, how how great that was, uh, and overall, I just like the way the whole the whole thing is fo seems to be focused more. The whole report seems to be focused more on the student, and that's that's what we're here for. Okay, great, thanks. Can I just ask one other question? Sure. On the third grade, on some of the lines, mm -hmm. there's two numbers. Yes. So that's actually they did two stories. So we had. We had, she did two stories to try to get, um, to try to get a little bit more information. So one of these was, um, there are two different teachers. So there's, there's teachers that, uh, one of the teachers gave two stories and one of the teachers only gave one. So that's why you see that there. I had to ask that question too. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm completely confused. <coughs> Good question. It's an hard to do. Okay. I think that's... Well, Corby, what I have is, um, at the last board report that you had to give, I got called out on not seeing your the emailed uh, newsletter that we were complimented on. So now I'm going to give back because I did start already. And I really appreciate you guys all asking me this because I'm really excited about all of it. So um, we did start that. That came from a conversation in middle school. That's where some of our biggest need is. And when we were looking at our data in middle school, we're just, we, we were not seeing the growth as quick as we needed it to be. And seventh grade maths or middle school math specifically we were struggling with really both middle school uh, math and ELA, just because we don't have an interventionist at that level that can provide intervention in math. But we did have a PE teacher who was a high school math teacher. And as we started talking, you know, we know we have to have all, all hands on deck to make sure that we're closing holes for kids 
And so we came up with some outside of the box solutions and the teachers got together and he said, hey, I'll take kids, like what group do you need me to take? And we built time and the schedule for that. And then we also have Laura Patrick, who's an amazing um, ex-ELA teacher who subs for us a lot. So we kind of said, hey, how would you feel about, you know, maybe three or four hours a day of pulling students and working uh, with that extra support? And so she's doing each grade level at a different time in the afternoon. So um, it's very outside of the box. It's, um, it's you know, again, we started at mid-quarter because we, we were like, this is a need. We have to do it now. We can't wait until we get a math interventionist next year. I mean, that's not an option. So, um, I just threw that out as a hope that maybe we'll get a math intervention. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so we, we, we're doing the most of what we have, and I love that the teachers are so perseverant and so tenacious. They're going to find a way to close the gap for their kids. And so um, now Ms. Lentz, our ELA teacher, is planning with Laura Patrick, which is great. Ms. Lentz is a new teacher, and Ms. Patrick brings a lot to that conversation. And so they're planning together and, and taking those kids under their wing together, and they're both taking different students depending on what's needed. And then also our um, PE teacher that used to teach high school math is supporting that math class. And our, and our science teacher is even pulling in informational text in science, as well as math skills that they're working on in um, math at the same time to just really make sure that we're coming out of every way we can. So I'm excited to see how it looks. Me too. Me too. Me too. I'm very hopeful for it. So they're working really hard. So, so just to echo everything I've already heard and you've already heard tonight, um, I'm, I'm very pleased with the layout of this board report um, and it, flowed, it, it flows so nicely and lets us know what you're doing with these kids and it's all about the kids and I can see that letter A coming back to that school in no time. And that's what we're going to for. So. Yep, I got gotcha. you. Well, thank you very much, Corby. Appreciate it. Thank you. Great report. <laughs> All right, so we've got our second and final board report for the principals, Hacienda Elementary, and Ms. Carissa Hershkowitz. Good evening. So, Ron, how would you like to start on that one? Okay. Um, let me get to my spot here. Not sure where, to, where that was. Yeah, I know what that is. I, mean, I won't ask that question. I think I know that one. Emotional regulation, and just another way of saying they can't control themselves. <laughs> Students without emotional regulation, yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Um, on the smart goal number two, uh, the question I had there, you, you talk about the third, fourth, fifth graders will have an average 20% growth in reading and math. Uh, is that this year's third, fourth, and fifth will be 20% growth over last year's third, fourth, and fifth? Or is it, what's the 20%? What's the it's, more, it's more apples to oranges, right? Oh, but I mean, is that what you're talking about is over that? Okay. I didn't know if it was like pre the what came in, you know, the first test you, you took at the start of the year, if they, you know, 20% over that or what it was. Okay. Um, there was a... Hmm. Actually, I think that was that was the only real question I had on, on the report. I thought, you know, it covered, covered everything well. The, uh, you know, your, uh, you know, this one report, yeah, pretty standard, nothing new there. Gained a few students, so yeah, looks uh, looks good. Kind of percentage based, you know, on the state assessment, which obviously you cannot do a pre-test state assessment every year, which states, and you have different testing that you do throughout the year. So how do you gauge like how close are we getting? I believe that's where Galileo comes in because it's assessing the standards mm -hmm. and it is intended to be a predictor of how we'll do on the testing. Mm -hmm. um, still working out some challenges with students and looking at data and um, taking it seriously along the way. Um, I just had a conversation today with a teacher about like, when, when they go into a test like Galileo, they don't feel like my testing to achieve something or to prove something, you know, in that way. And so we, I think it, 
it goes back to how we look at conversations with students as well, so that they know that there's a purpose to this. Uh -huh. and that, that information that we're gathering, the teachers are coming through, just like um, Corby was talking about with you know, the teachers and grade levels coming together and coming through that data and figuring out what is it we really need to hone in on. But if you have students that are like, yeah, you know, 35 questions in 45 minutes, then it, it gets a little tricky that way, doesn't it? Yeah. So we monitor that, and the big one will be looking at the one we'll do in end of January. And then for the discipline data, do you feel like there is a decrease so far? Yes. I'm glad you asked. Uh -huh. So um, the October report, I think, was 49 incidents overall. Is this one at 22? Uh -huh. And I was just thinking, have I seen any students in my office this week? And I haven't. Um, so wow. We, yeah, it's a significant decrease. And, and part of that is um, it, it doesn't mean that um, there aren't any issues, it's that we're managing them in different ways. So we do have those students who have um, some um, emotional dysregulation and we are addressing that. So we have had lots of parent meetings, lots of parent contacts. Um, we have um, several students who are on behavior plans. And so we're making those accommodations to go for a little extra walk or have somebody checking in with them in the morning so that they're starting their day off correctly. Um, and different uh, reward systems for them, whatever, you know, whatever it takes to figure out those um, problems. Because when you look at um, the, the 22 incidents that did make it to the office, there's very few that are, um, or there's just a handful that are just your frequent flyers and just figuring out what to do with those frequent flyers and what they need. So those have been minimized, which is wonderful. So I can do other things. It's been wonderful too. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And and I wanted to congratulate the Cowboy Poetry winners. I was so excited about that. Very exciting. Yeah. It took second place wow. and an honorable mention. And yeah, it was awesome. It's yeah. nice to be back in there. Awesome. Well, great job. Thank you. Sandy? Well, I was actually going to talk about the PBS, how I saw that that had gone down. I was yeah. very happy about that. Um, you know me, I'm all about kids listening and parents participating. Our, our kids have been doing great. I mean, it's, it's all around. It, it, you know, teachers have had this additional training and things that we've been working on, but um, there's a I don't know, a fresh vibe in the building, I don't know what you want to call it, but um, doing really well. Like my third, fourth, and fifth grade, they're hardly on the map here for discipline issues. Right. They're awesome. And a lot of that also goes back to the teachers that I have in third, fourth, and fifth grade do an amazing job with them. It's, it's refreshing. And Susan stole my other things, so... Um, <laughs> The, the only other thing I was going to say is I was reading and I, then I was told later on that this has been going on, but it, maybe it's the first time I've seen it in writing, that they're grouped by their reading levels, which really excited me because that's how I learned how to read. You were in the green book or the yellow book or the red book, and that way you're dealing with everybody having the same issues with understanding and so that made me happy. Right. Well, we've done Walk to Read. It's been part of our schedule for a long time. Um, so most kids get the um, same instruction for where they are. Right. So that made me happy. Good. It's all about making me happy. <laughs> oh, it's all about making Sandra happy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just thought everything was... Um, I, I felt reading these, I felt a lot of positivity, yeah. which yeah. was good because so often... It's been a lot of negative. There's a lot of things, things happening. But um, it made me happy to see a lot of positive things, a lot of activities going on with the kids and participation. So I was happy. That was my Christmas present for the year. Good. Randy? Carissa, great report. Um, <clears throat> and thank you for uh, filling in uh, the information on the acronyms okay. for us. Uh, the letters training uh, for the teachers, that's amazing. Um, I, I'm reading there, you know, what training it was for. 
but when I didn't know what the acronym was. Right. Right. It's term industry, it, mm -hmm. and it is um, it's very um, renowned. Um, it's a training that I went through years ago um, on site, and, and it's a nine day intense training. So it's nice that, that they have this opportunity without losing, you know, when you do something over three days at a time, it's a lot of information all at once. So this is broken down, it's um, in pieces that um, you can digest what you're talking about a little bit, and they, there's you know, reading components, there's a lot outside of our PD Friday that teachers are doing after hours to go through this process. And um, a lot of conversations are about, well, you know, in our letters training, we just did this, and I've tried this with these kids, and you know, we have, we have a couple of teachers that have requested to actually work forward because they want that information. They want to know whether, you know, what are the tools that our students need so that they can be successful readers. Great, yeah, yeah that, cool. that was really good information for us. Um, <clears throat> let's see, uh, Sandy mentioned the cowboy uh, poetry thing. That was great. Uh, I liked also <clears throat> your, uh, Attitude of gratitude, bingo. I totally stole them, but that's what. <laughs> what? Yeah. I stole that. Told oh, okay. Share that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, Share for both of you, yeah, great, yeah. great thing for the teachers. Wow. I just, uh, I'm sure it, it just inspiring for it, them. It was fun. And we did, I don't know if you called the winners out over the intercom during the school day, but I did that, uh, which I'm usually very cautious about interrupting classes in that way, but um, we were having some fun, and uh, one of the teachers said her, her students, when she didn't win, well, that's okay, maybe next time. Oh. <laughs> that builds community. So. Right. That's cool. Uh, and then your uh, uh, exceptional student services, the, uh, the speech, your communications, and all that that's going on there. Um, I, I big thumbs up for the speech team that's there. That that was great information there, and uh, and the instructional coaching team too. It just it was great. So uh, yeah, very good report. Thanks, Take Carissa. A lot of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Takes the village. <laughs> well, I just have um, I have a question for you about the plants. How often are those plans visited? Is that a once a day, once a week, once or yeah, when you need it? Plans? Yes. <laughs> um, well, when it's working, you don't have to visit it so often. Um, when you find that something has changed, um, you have to revisit. And so it just depends on how successful. Obviously, a plan that's not working, you're going to visit it more often, right? right? Yeah. And then uh, <clears throat> the other thing I just wanted to do was uh, give a shout out to. Uh, Sandy, she used an acronym. She doesn't do that. When I said PBIS. PBIS. I was so proud of you. Yeah. Because she's always saying, what are all these letters? Why can't we get the meaning of them? And she used an acronym. We have graduated her. We're speaking her. common language now. That was the goal. You know, I, w I want to add that. You know, I was 35 years out of Palo Verde. And our life was acronyms yes. like crazy. And it was like, word thing out. But um, still. Yeah. <laughs> I said the same thing, you know, I mean, being in the utility business, I mean, you use acronyms all the time. <laughs> but I anyway, it was a great report. <laughs> Thank you, Carissa. Sure. All right, item D is a presentation, Wickenburg High School Wrestling Room, presented by Principal Mark Gord Gorman. <laughs> Athletic Director Matthew Johnson and our Executive Director of Support Services, Jeremy Nunn. Good evening. I want to thank uh, members of the board for the opportunity to come tonight and present uh, some information uh, as follow up to last uh, month's concern regarding the, the wrestling room. So, uh, between Mr. Johnson, Mr. Nunn, and myself, we'll um, kind of share in some of the share outs here. Um, First, I want to just talk a little bit about, about kind of the history since I've been here um, with respect to, to the wrestling uh, room and, and the number of students that have been participating in wrestling. Um, 
So prior to my arrival in uh, 2019-2020, uh, the wrestling team was using the Wrangler Event Center or coming down here to the uh, uh, event center and uh, or, yeah, event center and utilizing the uh, the space for wrestling practice. And that fall, just thinking that Mr. Jones was very concerned, um, you know, regarding the space down here, um, the travel that was needed to get down here, some transportation things when kids were leaving, um, as well as the fact that they didn't have showers or anything down here. So wanted to locate a different space. Um, at the time, we had a uh, the space that they're currently in, which um, was being used uh, in, earlier in the fall for uh, cheerleading, there were three, and, I, and at that point, I guess they were sort of phasing out because we were moving into the winter uh, season. And so we uh, decided to move them back up to the high school and um, into that facility. Now, back in uh, those years, we had about nine or 10 kids in 2019 20, uh, as well as 2018 19, that were participating in wrestling. Of course, in 2020, uh, 2020, 2021, uh, COVID came into play, and that definitely impacted um, a lot of things, including uh, wrestling number, space, whether, um, uh, and, and again, we had uh, a similar number of students that were participating that year as nine, um, and it wasn't limited due to due to COVID. Uh, the following year, then, there was an uptick in the number, and that would have been last year, 21, 22. Uh, we had 15 that were uh, 15 males that particip participated and one female, so they had 16 students total uh, that were part of the wrestling program. And again, they were using that uh, wrestling room. Um, this year, that number has again gone up. Uh, you can see there, there's 18 boys and eight girls currently that are part of the wrestling program um, and use, using that room. And uh, as they indicated in that, uh, uh, their comments uh, last month. There was concerns regarding the space, um, both the numbers that were in the room, as well as uh, it was mentioned the, the brown liquid that was in there. And that's sorry, I just have a question. That's the upstairs at the Wrangler Event Center. No, no. Mm -hmm. where's the wrestling room? I'm not sure what space they actually use for. Besides the gymnasium, other than the actual room that's uh -huh. in there, and that's that's. They were in there in that kind of yeah, yeah. balcony. Mm -hmm. We moved it back in there in the north, northwest, northwest corner. corner of the There's gymnasium. a room in the gymnasium right off that hallway. At in the, the high school. At the high school. At the high school. school. That, that, that's the room that used to be the cheer room? Yep. Okay. I've been in there. So over the four years, there has been uh, a few conversations regarding space for wrestling. And um, I'll let uh, Mr. Johnson come up and talk a little bit about uh, that now. So um, <laughs> last year we had uh, 16 wrestlers, and Aaron had indicated, or Coach Grody had indicated that we were going to run out of room. Um, so what we did was we started kind of looking at some spots where we could move them. Um, one of the one of the ideas was the portables on the Walsh Peak campus. Those got to be not being used any longer. Um, part of the reason that Aaron and myself didn't really like those is it's off campus, and that's when, when they were here, there was there was a ton of reasons why we wanted to bring them back. One of the reasons is the buses didn't sweep down the ground for activity buses. Um, Coach Gordy was at, ended up having to take kids home and call and say, "I got to take this kid home," and it just wasn't a great situation. And so that's why we wanted to be on campus. So off campus was one of the reasons. And wrestlers have to shower, and they have to be clean after that. And so that that hurt, or that didn't offer uh, showers. Um, the other one that we talked about, the other option, was the upper classroom that's behind the H building. Um, used to be open. We used to be able to slip from Vulture Peak into that. It had been closed up recently, uh, probably before I got there. The problem with that room, there was no electricity, there was no heat, there was no water, and it wasn't closed up. Like birds could fly in because it was just kind of buttoned up for um, to close it up for supplies. So that wasn't a great option with time and with the amount of money and work that was going to have to be put into that. Uh, we also talked about the cafeteria um, down there because there's plenty of space, uh, but we did have some concerns with health and safety um, as far as putting athletes in the same building as food. food. <laughs> <laughs> um, another one we talked about the media center. Um, there was a, a decent amount of construction that would be done to have to bring that to where 
it would work as a wrestling room. Um, we would lose, uh, this year we have our easy SOC uh, classroom in there, so we would lose that classroom space, uh, potential rental space, and not only that, but staff and district meetings, um, it's kind of our biggest spot, and so we would lose that. Um, I also at one point had offered to split the gym, uh, the North Gym Court in half and put like a curtain down, kind of like we have a curtains, um, and we didn't really like that idea because the other half would be used for basketball, which means players would probably be bumping into it, falling into it, balls would still roll around it. We still have that even now with the long curtain, balls will still bounce around it coming out. So we just couldn't find a great solution. We had a lot of options, but none of them really kind of fit well. So, so <clears throat> following last um, month's uh, public comment uh, regarding uh, the, the space, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Nunn, Dr. Medina, and myself met on a couple of different occasions, went up and, and visited the room. We looked at some of the things like the space itself. We looked at, we pulled back the maps to, to find the black water, dark, you know, there's, there is a blackish water that was under it in places, um, or liquid that was found. Um, we, we did our own informal testing of smelling and trying to determine if we could figure out what it was. And there was really no smell that came along with it, and it was just in places. Um, we also uh, met with Coach Rohde uh, on uh, one occasion, kind of walked through the room, talked to him a little bit about the history of uh, the, the room itself, looked at some space um, around that room um, outside. We looked at um, and talked a little bit about what that brown water was and, and learned a little bit more about um, you know, maybe where it was coming from or how long it had been there anyway. Um, so we, we did a little bit of investigating uh, in the days and weeks following the Concern was brought to board. Uh, and with that, I'm going to let uh, Mr. Nunn come up and talk a little bit about some of the environmental factors that perhaps played into it. With the, uh, the liquid that's under the mats, it's trapped with uh, moisture vapor that, when it's sealed in, it creates condensation. Just like uh, if you took a piece of plastic and taped it down, or, or a two liter bottle, you leave it out in the sun, you'll notice that condensation develops. That's what is developing under there. Um, it's more than likely caused by not having a proper um, underlayment installed before pouring the concrete, a, a vapor barrier in the process with AD and the concrete stuff going up from the dirt up. Um, so some of the discussions we've talked about and options we have, and you can use one or all of these, depending on how thorough we want to get, but at the very least we need to thoroughly clean and disinfect the entire floor, just for safety, we don't know how long it's been closed up and what's in there. Um, we can grind the floor to give it a, a little bit of a rougher surface um, to properly install a seal coat, uh, which is a kind of an oxymoron, a liquid vapor barrier um, that penetrates into the concrete and it keeps any of that moisture from being able to get up to the surface of the concrete to prevent it from sweating inside the building like that anymore. Um, you can also install, install a breathable underlayment below the mats. It's like a rubber, uh, not a a felt type underlayment that helps airflow. Um, and at the very least, any of that would still need mats to be rolled up nightly to, or a couple times a week, once or twice a week, alternating what side you roll on to, to allow it to breathe. Um, with where that is, we're not going to get rid of moisture in the ground and flowing under the way the building is. So being able to give it a chance to breathe is what will stop that from happening again. Hey Jeremy, when you talk about the um, install the breathable underlayment below mats, the felt type thing, mm -hmm. is that just laying it on the floor, or is this a yes. process? Is it a different process, no, or just no. laying that down? Yeah, you would just lay it on the floor. What what happens? Is that vapor needs to have some place to go and escape, so right. it doesn't condensate and turn into a moisture. Okay. And by giving that breathable layer, it has a chance to kind of find its way out and escape without condensating and creating. So, is, what is it? How thick of it's it? about a quarter inch thick. You you can get them in from an eighth inch up to three eighths inch thick. Okay. How thick are the wrestling mats? Are they like gymnastics mm -hmm. mats? Inch and three quarter. Are they kind of like tumbling mats? Okay. So what I'm I'm seeing is the the problems just like 
if you're uh, gone somewhere to uh, sit in a a plastic or leather chair, the the, the sweating and condensation and stuff like that that gets you know on that type of surface thing. What it looks like to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? No. Thank you. So, in response, um, not knowing again what the uh, the liquid was that was in there and the size of the room, we went ahead and, and uh, moved the wrestling team out of that room and into the gym. So, rather than the half gym, like uh, half of one gym that uh, gym that Mr. Johnson mentioned, we uh, our gym is there's three full gyms there if you put the curtains down. So we gave wrestling one third of the gym space that was in there to use for that facility. And down at the bottom, you can see it's about 4,860 4, square feet approximately that are on that side, um, as opposed to about 1,620. These are just rough estimates um, based on my walking um, and calculating. So um, the, the square footage is considerably bigger um, by moving them into the gym. Now, if we can get the um, the issue with the liquid uh, mitigated as well, then at some point they could use actually both spaces um, be in that room as well as using some of the outdoor or the gym space if necessary. Um, so the gym uh, uh, is now the, the new location that they are in currently and um, until we get something rectified, I don't know where they'll continue to be at, at this point. Well, what is, what, what is the problem? Of not keeping it that way and letting them use. I think the, the biggest space. problem that has been shared with us is um, though we have three gyms, there's there's very little um, barrier when it comes to sound. And so there's a lot of bouncing balls, okay. there's a lot of whistles getting blown, and so that's carrying over between courts and between the types of practices um, that are going on in the difference between a wrestling um, match maybe and, and basketball and them being on just the other side of a, of a, of a tarp, really. So yeah. there's some of that. Hmm. Um, not uncommon. I mean, I've been at schools where, you know, we've um, had a, a gym that had an upstairs and, and uh, in the up, upper level that wasn't blocked off. I mean, it does happen when we do have those sort of tarp situations. So. One of the bigger problems that we found is they have to wrestle out there during basketball games. And so what we have to do is we have to bring the bleachers out and set it on that court for mm -hmm. away for visitors. And it cuts our space about in half because we have to light the mats up behind. So we have wrestling behind the things where Aaron's using a whistle, dirty uh, officials are using a whistle. But we also have, as the wrestlers warm up, they do a cadence and they count. And the other day we had it to where the officials couldn't hear, or the officials were kind of complaining about that, or in the coaches, was we can't even call plays in because we got this team doing this behind the bleachers, we got a game going on. Um, in addition, um, Matt tape, I'm buying a lot of Matt tape because he has to peel the bleachers up almost daily, and so that Matt tape is fairly expensive. I use Matt almost for money to do the bleachers daily. And it's just that me and our, um, uh, our custodian, so that's, that's just a couple other things. That, so in this, we've also looked at some potential options and, um, as we move forward. Um, we, we met with uh, Coach Grody, as we said earlier, and uh, looked at the potential to extend that current wrestling room into something that's a little bit bigger. So extending the current wrestling room out to the west, um, which is sort of back behind the gym. We looked at extending it potentially to the north, which is, uh, again, coming more out toward the side in that fire road that goes up to the football field. Um, and then looked at the potential to moving some uh, of those portables from the middle school over the high school, putting them on our campus, being closer to our site um, on that empty lot that's what's, crossing up toward the fields. As what's in this space next to the wrestling room right now? Like in the building? Like if you're in the building and you're in the wrestling room, what's right there? Locker rooms. There's a locker room and there's a hallway. Oh, outside. the locker rooms take up that whole side? Yeah, there's, there's, there's four locker rooms oh. and then a, a training space. I've only been in one of them. Yeah, I've been in there. And a bit, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was just trying to figure out what all went along that side of the hallway. Okay. 
Um, some other potential options that we were talking about considering were potentially building some sort of a structure, a large metal, you know, building of sort. Um, estimated costs that we had received were without labor of about $150,000 to $200,000 on materials for something like that, that for about a 5,000 square foot building up there. And then uh, the final one was flipping the weight room with the current wrestling room. So we move our weight room into the wrestling room and we use the wrestling room, um, move the wrestling room down to our weight room. Um, and that would increase the square footage in that room um, for wrestling purposes by between four or 500 square feet. And so that, that actually is the one that we felt was one that we could, um, we could pull off and do. Um, it would take a little bit of time to move equipment, but it's something that we could potentially do. And that would, again, bring about 500 square feet additional space to the wrestling uh, room, which hopefully would help them to spread out a little bit more, have more space in there. Uh, again, uh, to, to close things off so they're not, there's not that interference that's happening between basketball and them. Um, again, that would cause us to, to need to move the weight room down. It is a little bit smaller uh, space. But there's uh, some openings or some potential to, to open up and do some things outside at that on that side too. So we've talked about, you know, there's some flexible space potential at least that's over there if we needed to, to um, add to that down the road. But um, then our other recommendation was we really just continue to, um, to research and, and look at what other possibilities there were with that space down there when we move the, the, um, the weight room to so that, that again, we could... Um, extend beyond that room if we needed to when it came to working out um, and using the space again that's outside as I said. Is that when, well, I think of the football team as, as the largest, you know, bunch of weightlifters at one time. <laughs> is there is there enough room there in the weight room for the for the football team to, to do there? Or is it going to be have to be moved they again next fall? They have classes that use it. They have classes during the day that use it. How many right. students do you have in those? Typically, we, we are running about between 25 and 35, probably that are in a weight class. I would venture to say most of them are between 25 and 30. In one class? Yes. In one class. That's a lot. Yeah. Some are less. But so is there enough room for in the wrestling room for I feel like that to I handle? Feel like there is enough. We may not be able to get... Um, we have to reconfigure how the, the equipment is. Again, mm -hmm. some of the things that they do inside, there are some doors that, that can go out to the outside, and we talked about how we might be able to um, reinvent that space a little bit to, to do some things, uh, to get some workout space out there. Um, but um, we felt like there was enough room based on what we're seeing there. Is. Do we have girls and boys basketball using the gym every day? Yeah, it's a little bit of a dilemma we run into. Is, Probably different than some with the size of our district and, and transportation and running our late buses at six, uh, it sort of locks us in on times. And so everyone practices from that 3.30 to six o'clock window. Um, some places are able to flex that time and they run later practices or earlier practices, but that's a little bit too much of an hour drive down to festival in some cases. And uh, we have some kids that are participating, they don't drive. And parents maybe don't want them driving late at night uh, down every night too. So, you know, that, that makes it difficult um, for sure. But, um, you know, right now we've been able to work around some of that and that's what we're kind of trying to do right now is to work around it a bit with our, our recommendations so that those uh, transportation issues don't um, become an issue, I guess. So do the girls and boys practice together? Not on the same courts. They have different courts, separate courts. For basketball. No, not basketball. For wrestling. 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 I believe they're in the same, I mean, they are together. Yes, when they were in that building uh, or in that room, they were practicing in the same vicinity. I think there is some division between where they're at. So girls are practicing together in one side of it while the boys. Don't girls wrestle against boys? Sometimes. Okay. <clears throat> I have a friend that has a daughter that wrestles, so. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's actually girls varsity. Oh. Teams, so oh. Varsity stadium for girls. Oh, that's good. So, oh, oh, oh. Go ahead. so is our wrestling team um, in agreement if we just switch the weight room and the wrestling room? Would that satisfy them for now? 
Yes. Situation is, I don't want to displace anybody. That's 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 probably my biggest problem with this. Um, but yeah, it would work. It would one hundred percent work. But you know, you burn a bridge to gain what you're getting. So I'm not displace like that. But I don't see yeah, I why don't see any moving the weight room. There, well, and your guys yeah. use the weight room. Too. I mean, your team uses yeah. the weight room too, right? So yeah. I don't think really we're displacing anybody as long as we can still hold. Since weightlifting is a class and not a sport, you know, we would have to accommodate the weight, um, the weightlifting class. So as long as the class was big enough, I mean, as long as the room was big enough to accommodate whatever size class, their biggest class. If you got 30 kids, though, yeah. even the weight room isn't that big <laughs> for 30 kids in weightlifting, um, weight training. I know, you know, it's weird. Also serves as one of our assistant uh, football coaches as part of that. I don't know if he has anything. You know, I know sometimes we get concerned about uh, the numbers of football team can have a, a high number of kids. In that. Yeah, well, we, we haven't seen a lot of high numbers in the past. I think with what Coach Mack is doing, you're going to see those numbers increase. Right now, we're having, uh, we're not this week because finally we want kids focus on grades, but we have uh, weightlifting after school, and there's about 12 or 15. Is participating in that that don't participate in other sports, and we think you know obviously that number is going to grow during baseball season. It will probably shrink again, but uh, it's something that will I think grow. I think the recommendations. Mr. Molly, may I make a clarification? Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt the governing board members, but I just want to make a uh, just a clarification. Our our main. Um, concern was addressing safety and health of the building in general, no matter what that room is used for. That room is actually built as a weight room, and then many years ago, there was a community member that donated the current weight room, so it was converted to cheer because it was small and wrestlers were down here, and so it's been back and forth all over the place. Our recommendation, and um, there were several of us, I don't believe Coach Grody was with us when we were looking at the weight room, but was to to find a solution for the immediate need this year because we have a large wrestling team and that's so exciting. We want to have them to have space, but the recommendation to flip the wrestling room with the weight room would provide the wrestling team a little bit more space. It would also provide us with an opportunity to do a really good reevaluation and evaluation of what we currently have in that weight room and what do we need to do if we need to do anything to make it more usable for our classes for the, the, the program that we offer as part of our curriculum, as well as meet the needs of all of the athletic teams. So this would be what I would consider and what we've talked about is like phase one. Does that mean it's gonna solve the issue indefinitely? Maybe, maybe not. You know, you never know with individual sports. Sometimes you have 10 kids and the next year you may have three. You know, Coach Grody's built a great program and we wanna recognize that. And certainly girls, in the sport is growing like crazy. So we've got to really be responsive. But I think our recommendation right now is to um, make sure that we have some space, utilize the space we have, take advantage of our operating. We may need to update some things in the weight room. We may need to deal the current weight room. So um, I think moving forward, I don't think that we're going to say this, is what we're doing, we're done. You know what I mean? It may be that there's 40 wrestlers next year and the only place is the basketball court and we just have to share space again. So um, I just wanted to clarify that that we really, all of us, it was, we really want to congratulate Coach Grody and, and the team because they've done an amazing job in growing that sport and it's so exciting to watch the girls and to cheer for the girls. But um, I don't have a back pocket <laughs> with anything else. So, you know. They do say that girl wrestling is one of the fastest growing sports yeah. right now. So. Mm -hmm. We have one yeah. last year, we have eight this year. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, what, what, uh, what, what, what's their class, like, grade, grade-wise, just curious. For the girls? Yeah. I have uh, two freshmen, three sophomores, I think a junior and a senior. Okay. I was just curious where they, you know. I have one senior girl. And the girls that have joined, they've all stayed with it? Yeah. We have, we've Great. had one quit when she was a senior. Oh, okay. No, I think it's really exciting. Um, and I think it's really exciting that you're still coaching. 
and um, it's kind of a little private joke. And but I think this right now, in order to come up with a solution, you know, if we can switch rooms and um, go from there, at least we'll take care of fixing the brown goo, whatever, um, and get those and at least come up with a solution for now so that we don't have to share with the basketball and um, just put our thinking caps on and <clears throat> see what happens and what we can do in the future. Yeah, I really like the idea of uh, think to swap. It's an immediate, something we can do right now. And um, we don't have to worry about the back pocket at this point to build anything. We've got the restrooms, we've got the showers, we've got everything right there. But also continue to research on expansion. What can we do different? What can we do extra? Did somebody drop a million dollars out of the plane and it's ours to use and we can build a dollar? So, uh, you know, that type of thing. No, do you? Okay. Um, because I, the other things that were on there is um, potentials, like putting a portable up on that top thing. Well, it's there and you're sitting without showers again. You're sitting there without a lot of things, you know. Like so me. we're talking we're talking lots of uh, dollars to get utilities and things to that. So I really, my opinion is I like the idea of doing a swap yep. and then have uh, staff continue to research. Don't let it just sit on the back burner. Just research if there's something different and we can possibly find the funding or whatever. Then that's all great, you know. That way we solve the thing right now. Yeah. For for now. I was gonna ask, are you are you gonna seal the concrete floor in the weight room before think, you do, do I think it needs to be done regardless. So mm -hmm. no matter what that is used, So in other words, no, are you gonna do it before there. you put the the wrestling team in yes. there? Okay. Yes, how long how long a process is that? Procuring and all that? Three to four days. Okay. Okay. We're very fortunate that we hired a flooring expert as our executive director of <laughs> <laughs> support <laughs> services. <laughs> it's done weeks, the business weeks, there before. Uh, <laughs> so. we have a time off coming up here. In, uh, <laughs> How long does wrestling go? When does it end? <laughs> yeah, and I just want to recognize the wrestling team because they have been successful for a lot of years. There's been some really good wrestlers, and and I think. You know, we've had good basketball teams, but we've had great wrestlers. And um, I think we need to try to find a long-term solution that actually supports the growth of the future of the wrestling team as well. Because, you know, having 12,000 square feet for basketball and 2,000 for wrestling, you know, we, I, would, I would like to see something better for them in the future. Yeah, and like Dr. Remondini said, you know, we can do this as a short-term solution, but we can't just drop it. We need to continue to to look for solutions or what Daddy Warp seen them is the accordion walls instead of just dropping a curtain or whatever. They I've, I've been in gymnasiums; they have those. It, it might cost a little money, but uh, they slide those walls in. Uh, to separate those gymnasiums like that. Yeah. I don't know if that takes care of the whistles. Oh, oh I mean, you know, you that's, know, that's whistles. Thing. Really? Yeah. Well, I find that a minor yeah. thing. <laughs> when you're at a, a conference and there's a big room yeah. and then they bring the little walls out, yeah. You can still hear what's going on. Right, so yeah. I really don't. I think we put a lot you, of money into something the, that isn't a solution. You're preventing the, 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 the basketballs balls. from going across to the other rooms and stuff like that. Certainly. So. Yes. It's, it's really not the whistles aren't the problem. Yes. Yeah. We're in a sport where I need to talk to my kids up close. And I have balls bouncing in that background the entire time. Uh -huh. I mean, they're playing their music. I don't play music because I don't believe it. But well, I'm contending with that, too. Right. So mm -hmm. it's, it's more than just the whistle or nothing. I, I can deal with the whistles all day. I mean, we coach with whistles. We coach with good tournaments with whistles. But when you have another sound that is just beyond what you're normally listening to, you know, in the next room over, I mean, it would be bad if it was in the hallway outside of a closed door. Right. That curtain doesn't work. No. 
I don't care about no. Boston. I agree. Yeah. So it kind of uh, sounds like we're in agreement on swapping the rooms for now and mm -hmm. let uh, staff continue to do research. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. Move on. Okay. Thank, thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate thanks. your time. Thank you. And thank you, Coach Grody. Thank you. Appreciate everything you do. Hi. All right, so this one. You're going to do that for me? Mm -hmm. Okay. When we're ready. Okay, so we're moving to call to the public, and we've got one. And it's Mr. Byrne, and Mr. Byrne knows that he's got two and a half minutes to get everything out. And Casey's going to be timing us, and we're going to roll on. Okay. Good evening. How are you doing there, man? Doing good. Okay. How are you? Uh, I've got a guy back here, Matt. Just to you, inform you guys, okay, I've got the dispatch, right? This guy is overworked. He needs some help. But this this guy here resolved a lot of problems pertaining to the middle school basketball team. Okay? And I want to tell you something. You know, it, it, it takes guts to do what he did, especially with a mad parent like me in the parking lot. So I just want to say, this is good to see that we can hopono pono talk things over and then shake hand afterwards and it's done. Okay, that's done. Okay. Now, the bad part. Last week I had a meeting with uh, His Highness or the Mayor, okay? Also with the police chief, also with the town manager, expressed exactly what you guys have been talking about over here. Very simply, this community is not going to stay small. When Morristown catches up to Wickenburg, you're going to get about 3,000 plus houses over there. Those second stringers, they're all going to be coming to Wickenburg because they can't make the first string football team and all that stuff. So your numbers are going to boom, 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 boom. So the research that you guys have to do to get this building a little bit bigger, I believe Del Webb's got a couple mil, right? Okay. So that's done. I never took a drug in my life. But we got some serious problems with the middle school area. When I hear, at least I still think it's a drug, I'm not sure. Medical marijuana, marijuana, whatever way you want to say marijuana. When you get two kids show up in school with a couple ounces of marijuana, that pisses me off. So what we spoke about at the town council meeting last week, not the town council meeting, but he said it's the mayor, right? I asked the police chief directly, why cannot you show more presence over there at the school? Here was, here was his comeback. We have never been asked by this district to come and show acknowledgement at the schools like they did for whoever the other guy was that was here prior doc. Okay, can you yield me 30 more seconds? Yeah, go ahead. You, you know, I want to get to see you guys once a month, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I tried to get on the agenda, a presentation, I can make all that. I, I, let me ask, can I can I get on the agenda item next month? Then I get a little bit more time to hopono pono. So you guys, hopakiki, the ears open and it stays within the two ears. It, it's important. This stuff is important. My 44-year-old down to my 12-year-old right now. Never in my wildest dreams did I ever think I'd have to do this again. To go to meetings and try to talk some common sense to people. This drug thing needs to stop in the school. You all need to figure out how to stop it. Because that's all I'm getting. One other little thing. The bus drives coming in. One more thing the principals have to do which they've got an armful to do already. Might have to review film, like the NFL referees, right? Review film of the bus rides coming in, and you will find the cause of the problems in your school. 
It starts at 7 o'clock in the morning when they pick up the kids on the bus route. Mahalo nui loa, melikaliki maka, mahalo nui kai. Okay? Thank you. I hope you guys can understand that. Appreciate it. So how do I get on the agenda? What, can somebody explain it to me? How can we do that? Because this kind of stuff, you know, is you come for two minutes and you, you know, you're over here trying to explain stuff that you hear from the kids. I've got 11, 12 kids come up to my place out there in Fort Park. Six of those kids have been suspended one, two, three times. Let me tell you something. I've got no problems with those kids out in Fort Park, tackling cattle, learning their ABCs, whatever else they're doing. I would call our friend, Dr. Ramandini, and have that discussion. Okay, my friend. No, but I have the discussion with you guys. So you guys you. can discuss it. Yes. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, All right, item four, consent agenda. <laughs> Do we need anything pulled from the consent agenda? Yes. Okay. Uh, the PARS for Susan Cushman and Jeff Schaefer. I'm sorry, what? The PARS for Susan Cushman and Jeff Schaefer. Okay. <clears throat> So we're pulling item F, the two parts. And anybody else need anything else pulled? Hearing none, we can take action on the rest of the consent agenda then. Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve the consent agenda items for December 14th, 2021, minus F, the personnel action reports. Just for those two. Just for those two, or we have to pull the whole thing? Just those two. Just, okay, just for Susan Cushman and Jeff Schaefer. Right. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right, so who wants to speak on? Mr. President, members of the governing board, I apologize. Those two PARs that have been pulled had the wrong amount listed. We did increase the payment for supervision at that, at athletic events from $25 to $30. And you just approved that as part of the consent agenda. Those PARs were submitted prior to us getting that finished. So those PARs have the wrong amount and need to be corrected to $30 per event from the $25 that's listed on those two PARs. Okay. <laughs> if we so, can get a motion on those two parts. Okay, so I'll make a motion to approve the parts for Susan Cushman and Jeff Schaefer with the change to thirty dollars per event. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Item five, action items. First one is a request for approval of financial reports by our executive director of business services, Ms. Aaron Johnson. Good evening, Mr. President, members of the board. Uh, you have your normal monthly report in front of you. Um, we are trending well. We do see our numbers are up over um, prior year. Um, that's because we're, we're back to spending um, more of our, our funds. Uh, things have um, also gone up in cost and we've given gave some increases at the beginning of the year. So that's why you're seeing some of those numbers um, trend up. And I know um, Mr. Alexander had a couple of questions, so if he wants to go into that before I anticipate the questions and answer, I'll let you ask your questions. <laughs> well, uh, okay, one question. What is, what's actual, or what's other objects, I guess? The other objects is basically going to be anything but salary and benefits. So the red is the total between the blue and the yellow, or the average between the blue and the yellow. So your blue um, speedometer okay. there is all of your salaries and benefits, and then that's everything else. So it's going to be any of our professional services. So anything we contract out for OT, PT, um, all of our general supplies, um, utilities. Okay. I mean. Okay. Now, I, I, well, my question, and and even on the actual expenditure line, but you know, we're we're at about forty percent of the year, and the expenditures are over forty percent. Mm -hmm. So. Are we going to run out of money before the end of the year? <laughs> no, we're not going to run out of money before the end of the year. You know, a lot of these items, too, we front load 
um, you know, we may open up a blanket purchase order for X amount of money, but only spend so much. So by the end of the year, we're kind of averaging things out. Um, also, you know, we kind of ebb and flow with what our purchases are. For example, recently we got new tires, you know, and we also have been spending a lot more on fuel because the town pumps were down. So we've had to go to gas stations mm -hmm. to pay for gas and that cost is higher than at the, at the town pumps as well. So, um, and so we just have a lot of those expenses. Plus I typically cut our schools off March, April from any of their spending. Um, so, so we're really more than halfway through our year at this point in, when it comes to spending. So okay. no, we're, we are not going to run out of any money. I can assure you. At this point. How about if the other thing, if the uh, yeah, expenditure limit's not passed? <laughs> well, we do have a plan for that. So, we, you know, our intention is to keep our doors open and keep our students learning, even if the AEL does not pass. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. So, with that being said, our budget balances are positive. Um, we are in compliance, and there are no surprises to the best of my knowledge. Thank you. Well, with that said, uh, Make a motion to approve that financial report as submitted. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Item B Request for approval of the Wickenburg Unified School District Number 9 Budget Revisions Fiscal Year 2022. Hello again. Oh, hello, Aaron. <laughs> it's been so long. Time <laughs> Um, so this item has been on our budget worksheets um, since 2011, 2012. Um, somehow, some way, it got missed in FY22. So what that is, is um, the district participated in an energy savings project back in 2011, like I said. So two business managers prior to me um, is when that, that was done. Um, so under that project, a loan was given to the district that requires the district to subtract that $65,000 every year from the M&O budget and put it in an energy savings account. And then we make our payment to the loan from the energy savings account. So um, it got it got missed. Um, I, I already accounted for it on our AFR that I did in October. So we don't have to revise any of that because that's when I caught it. Um, and I worked with the AG's office and they said that was fine to do it that way. So um, FY23 will be the last year that you see that $65,000 on there because this loan does end in May of 2023. Um, so from what I can gather in this big binder that I have in my office that I found in a closet when I first started um, <laughs> is some examples of the energy efficient projects where, you know, we did some lighting upgrades. Um, they did some control upgrades, HVAC upgrades, got a new boiler. Um, so it was all things like that. And it was all through um, a grant with APS, um, Climatech was involved. And like I said, the bank. And um, so it, was, it looked like it was quite the big project. Like I said, the binder's about that thick with all of the, the documents in it. So um, that kind of explains what that energy transfer credit is. Any other questions on that? I want to know it these projects actually saved us money? I don't know for sure if they did or not. They were so old. We've actually, since that project was done, we've done another lighting project. Um, so with sensors and the time, the lights going on and off. Um, since that was done so much prior to me, I don't know what the, the immediate um, savings so, were on it. I just know that I have, to make the, I have to make the payments on it. So, so like I said, it was done in 2011. Right. And so, um, why don't you figure that out for us? Figure that out for you. <laughs> I'll do that in my spirit. <laughs> I'm going to assume it probably saved us money um, for the project cost, probably just going through that program. I'm going to guess that we got some discounts and things through that because there were some IRS credits in there and things like that, too. So, I don't know if you remember, you were probably here. <laughs> I Any of that? We saved money. I think yeah. we're, I went we to that meeting. Uh, that was yeah. back when um, Sherry or Rogers was on the board. I, don't know. I, I remember being, I happened to have been. That was for last year. Board yeah. meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And it was two business managers ago. Yes. Um, yeah. It was a good plan, but I don't know how we lost the binder. Anyway. Well, we're paying, we're making our payments. That's a good thing. Yes. All right. Anybody uh, ready to make a motion on that one? Sure. I'll make a motion that the governing board of 
the Wickenburg Unified School District number nine, uh, approve the budget revision number three uh, for fiscal year 2022 as presented. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So now we've got our um, item C. First reading of policy advisories. Yeah. Well, you see them. There's four of them. Three of them. Three. Anybody have any commentary for those? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, item D, Wickenburg Unified School District calendars for fiscal year 23-24 and 24-25. Um, I just wonder if we could start school any earlier. I was thinking well, the same thing. We will a couple yeah. of years and then we'll go back to a little bit later, so. <laughs> I'm looking at it like, oh boy, yeah. where did summer go? Yeah. Okay. But we have air conditioned buses now, so hey, you know. Jeremy's going to make sure we keep those going, and that's awesome. All right, so anybody have any? Sense to me. Yeah, I know. Well, because it's nicer in June. Uh -huh. It would be, uh -huh. seems more prudent to go longer when the weather is nice, even mm -hmm. if we do have air conditioning. What? Plus money. Uh -huh. Then to start. <laughs> nicer in June than what? The heart, go back after the Labor Day? Part of the <laughs> that's summer. my childhood. <laughs> That's, that's the East Coast. Right yeah. Weather's nicer than June than in when? July. July. The end of July. It's August. always the oh. hottest part of the yeah. summer. <laughs> I don't know. I played golf as 122 in June once. <laughs> With all the hard work they did, can we get a I graduated minutes? June 15, 1997. Me too. 1997. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did it on 1976. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. You win. <laughs> no. I win. Okay. okay. All right. Ready for 67? All right. I'll make a motion to approve the Wickenburg Unified School District calendar. S-S-Y? School. School year 2023-2024 and 2024-2025 as submitted. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. <clears throat> and at this time, I need to let you know that we're going to need to go into executive session. It was possible for a little while now, it's for sure. 